episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL-TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Dip for Dinner. I'm Elizabeth, and as usual, I'm joined today by Katie and Beth to tell us about their recipes. So Katie, why don't you start us off and tell us about what you made? Okay, I will. Um, So this was an interesting topic for me because I do not generally eat dip for dinner. So I was kind of like, digging deep trying to think of something that um would fit the category and i was i ended up remembering um something that my mom used to make a lot when i was a kid and um it's spinach dip that is traditionally put in a bread bowl not not to be confused with spinach artichoke dip but this is like a creamy spinach dip in a bread bowl sort of deal um i emailed my mom and asked for her recipe and it was just like I don't know, is a lot of sour cream and a lot of mayonnaise. And I was just like, ooh, I wonder if we could make this a little bit healthier. So I did some Googling and I came up with Healthier Spinach Dip by Alina Ossipoff from ifoodreal.com. And um, I liked this recipe because instead of like a whole lot of sour cream and mayo, there's a bunch of Greek yogurt in here and then a little bit of mayo. So I really was attracted to it for that reason, Um, but it's pretty basic. You take some frozen spinach and defrost it. I just put mine in the fridge overnight and that does it. Uh, This says you can use a microwave too, so I suppose you could. Uh, Once it's defrosted using your hands, you just squeeze out all the excess water as much as you can from the spinach and go ahead and just put that in a bowl. And then you saute some veg, which I really liked about this recipe as well. Um, You do some uh, minced onion and some minced garlic, then some grated carrots, which I thought was a really nice addition to this to use for crunch because I know a lot of the old recipes use water chestnuts for that crunchiness, and I'm not a fan. Like, it's okay in this recipe, but I really appreciate carrots instead. So I I thought that was really great. Um, So you saute all that until your onions are translucent, transfer that to your bowl with the spinach, and then you add in yogurt, mayo, salt, and pepper. It's two cups of Greek yogurt to a quarter cup of mayo. So there really isn't all that much mayonnaise in this. Um, You stir that up, and then you add some grated garlic to taste, just some fresh grated garlic and let that sit in the refrigerator for a couple hours to get those flavors all melded together. And then because this is a healthy recipe, they serve it with pretzel chips or brown rice crackers, which I did not. I definitely wanted to preserve the bread bowl part of this dip. So I found a sourdough bread bowl at Meyer that I used. My mom used to serve it with pumpernickel bread bowl, which I would have done if I had seen one, but I got what I saw in the sourdough was wonderful with it. Um, I hollowed out the center and I didn't put my dip directly in the center because I was making this for dinner for my husband and I, and I knew that we weren't going to eat it all. I didn't want the bread to get all soggy. So you can see in my picture, I just put it in a little ceramic bowl and put that in the bread bowl for a presentation. Um, And I I served it for dinner. I know I served it alongside something else, but I honestly cannot remember what because we really did eat basically just the dip for dinner. It was so good. My husband liked it. I loved it. I think this is um going to be a really cool holiday recipe. So I'm planning on making it at least one point throughout that season. I think it'll be really good. Um, gosh, I feel like there was something else I was going to say about it. But I can't. Oh, I did look back and uh, like did a little history Googling on this recipe to see like when it came from. And apparently it was really popular in the 70s and 80s, which makes a lot of sense that my mom used to make it for me when I was a kid because I'm an 80s baby. So um, I thought it was it was a fun uh, trip down memory lane, a little bit healthier. So that was my recipe. I love that. I love the carrots. And because I'm not a fan of, 
uh, water chestnuts either. A lot of times I don't mint those. That's yeah. 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 I remember I used to be the concept of bread bowls was like so exciting to me yeah. as a kid. Um, and I think, yeah, you don't see them quite as much anymore, I feel, but um, that's kind of delightful to like just have it in there. And um, great tip for the ceramic thing for presentation, though, because really, like, if you do put it fully in the bread, that you can't keep any of the bread. So I think that's that's nice for presentation. Cool idea. Yeah. Yeah. I I love that. I it was a, a staple at every potluck, every work party, every everything. Uh, it was with nor vegetable soup too. Uh, okay. Was usually what went with it. So you don't use any other kind of spice. It's just the uh, the salt, the veggies pepper, and garlic, the garlic. Really, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Salt yeah. though, salt pepper. Yep. So, salt, okay. Pepper, garlic. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that sounds great. Love it. Thanks. Well, Beth, tell us about your dip for dinner, dip queen. You know I am. And, uh, you know, dip for dinner is not unheard of in my household. Um, but not, I don't go at it like, hey, let's have dip for dinner. It just happens. Uh, but this one, so good. It was, I made a queso fundido. Um, I, I, uh, First saw that, I see it at other restaurants. Some are not so good. I'm not gonna name names, but um, anyway, I saw it at a local restaurant. And um, so I looked up a recipe and it was from The Modern Proper. It called for nine ounces of chorizo, although you could use mushrooms. I almost did do both, but I didn't. Four ounces of uh, green, I use mild green chilies. The recipe could use either one. This also called for one and a half pounds of grated cheese, which is a lot. And I only, I used a pound. I got just two bricks, one uh, pepper jack and one mozzarella, just so it would get nice and gooey. Uh, so I didn't use any, you know, Mexican cheese, but um, it was so good. So you just saute the, the chorizo, add the chilies. I also have to mention... I, I don't buy chorizo a lot, um, but the I happened to get some at Whole Foods. It was so good. It, it was so flavorful. It had, um, you know, I could taste the caraway seeds. They were just, it was just very flavorful. It had a nice little tang to it. It wasn't spicy, but um, it was really, really good. I also used our favorite, you know, uh, lime flavored Ann Arbor tortilla chips. Here's a picture um it's a bit greasy but you know it was so good that I can it's also really makes a good breakfast because yeah I only regret I didn't have more of it for breakfast because then it, the rest of it got eaten by somebody else later bummer but um we served that with an elote salad alongside it so it was 100 percent yum yeah, that sounds great. I totally agree with you that queso fundido can be uh, at restaurants. It's like, yeah, going to be good or is it not? Um, I wanted to ask how you melted the cheese. Oh, before I get into that, I failed to tell you about the that I also made a pico de gallo that um, I'll share the recipe with that. This particular one had a, a pico recipe too. But anyway, I had all the ingredients. So. Um, you just, you know, you uh, after you cook the meat, you just pour the cheese on, oh, and then bake it. Yeah, you bake it for like 20 minutes. Yeah, that's kind of key, isn't it? Uh, you bake it, comes out super gooey. I think it was supposed to be 25, but it was done in 20 minutes. And uh, yum, yum, yum. I'm gonna make that again for you yeah. guys. That sounds good. And I'm, I'm excited that you bake it because I was picturing it kind of on the stove and that seems messy and like, uh, I don't want to deal with it. So it's nice that you just throw it in the oven yeah. and then it yeah. comes out and it's dipped. So yeah, that's how you cover really it. Good. You cover it with, well, I just covered it with the top and then, yeah. So it's, um, 
super easy too. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So I loved it. Um, so I'll share both the pico and the the other recipe. So Katie, it's Elizabeth, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> um no, oh, I was okay. okay. So I was panicking because I thought that it finally happened that Katie and I did the like exact same recipe. We didn't, but mine's extremely close. So sorry to you guys and our listeners. Um, I'm a huge, okay. So also I don't really do dip for dinner. Typically like in my family, like sometimes my mom would have like a dip pre-dinner. Cause like we, my sister and I would be hungry. So we would have like hummus or something out and like for holidays, often we have some dips out, but it's rare that that would be dinner. Um, but in recent years, when I've been making a lot of dips for football games and just kind of like having like three or four dips and then just grazing on them. So that's, it's become more common for me, but I feel like the phrase like dip for dinner, I was like, I never do that. I do, especially when watching sports, but it took me a while to kind of decide what to do. So anyway, I'm a huge fan of spinach artichoke dip. Similar to Katie though, when I was like looking up recipes for that, because it is kind of heavier. So I was like, oh good, that's a good dip for dinner. And sometimes at restaurants, if I'm hungry, but not super hungry, I will get spinach artichoke dip and just have that. But I was looking it up and I was like, man, this is so bad for you. I mean, you know, it's just, I was like, I don't want to make this. Like, it's just not. Nah. So I also found a recipe for something similar, but they a little bit different and a little healthier. And it's, this is for spinach dip with garlic, yogurt, and dill. Um... So this was super easy. Um, basically, you get some frozen spinach, just squeeze it out until it's super dry, set it aside. And then in a blender or food processor, you combine three quarters of a cup of sliced scallions, both the white and the green parts, half a cup of um, whole milk Greek yogurt, half a cup of softened cream cheese, half a cup of chopped dill, a little bit of chopped parsley, couple garlic cloves, um, juice from half a lemon, zest from that half a lemon, a little bit of cumin, salt, and pepper. And then you kind of just blend it until it's smooth. And then you scrape that into a mixing bowl and fold in the chopped spinach that you've squeezed out until it's kind of whatever well mixed. And then you're supposed to refrigerate it for at least 30 minutes up to two hours to really let the flavors blend together. Um, and then you can add more, um, salt, pepper, and lemon juice when you serve it, if you feel like it. And then it says to drizzle with olive oil before you serve. Um, and I served this with both like sliced carrots, um, sliced radishes, sliced cucumber, and then also some like pita points just kind of all displayed. And it was quite good. Um, it was, you know, I, it didn't blow my mind, but I thought it was really tasty, definitely a healthier option to like the traditional baked spinach artichoke dip. And it was super easy. I mean, this, you could throw together in five minutes, throw it in the fridge. Um, I was thinking that I might make this for the holidays because it's just a tastier, it's a tasty version of spinach artichoke dip. That's not, you know, as bad for you. Um, I have a photo here of what it looks like and, um, I'd make it again. So yeah, it was good. And it was certainly filling enough with all the options for the um, kind of crudité or whatever you want to say. So it was good. Well, it sounds good. And it does sound different than the one that I chose. So I think it's it's nice. And it sounds, I love that you served it with veggies. Uh, it sounds like it would be really good with that. I have been making veggie trays for football games recently, just to kind of like before we serve the main thing. And I've just been buying, you know, ranch dip at the store. And so this sounds like a really nice alternative to that. So I think maybe I'll make it. Uh, yeah, that's both of you. That sounds delish. Just make sure you confer with each other if you go to a holiday potluck this year. Um, but I also wanted to mention that to me, and there's other kinds of, uh, uh, menus that serve this too but like middle eastern food is like the quintessential dip for dinner you know 
when it, when you've got your bab ganoush and your uh, hummus and you know, so it's not unheard of, right? And no, I think likely I found this category in a Mediterranean cookbook. Like that's very possible. How, yeah, you know, that's how I often come up with categories. Is like I'm like, oh, dip for dinner. Well, that sounds fun. It probably was straight from, because yeah, you're absolutely right. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And I almost did a Mediterranean spread because I was like pretty tempted by that. I was gonna make like three different kind of Mediterranean dips, but I um. Well, I don't like baba ganoush, so I didn't want to make that. Um, and hummus, we've talked about before, making our own hummus. And so then I was kind of like, well, I, so, but totally, I feel like that's like mm -hmm. Eastern quintessential, just dips on the table and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love and one it. other comment I wanted to say mm -hmm. is with the veggies, with the thicker dips, it works so well, but to have like the carrot sticks or like the radish, because I feel like the chips like break off, you know, yeah. so. It is yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm always, and I, I make as Katie knows in, in, with her office next to mine, <laughs> dip for lunch is not unusual. And I do like to make a quick, you know, yogurt and seasoning and grab some veggies and boom, I have a nice little snack for the afternoon. So always down for dip. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, great category, everyone. I will take us out by saying thank you for watching Recipe Share and be sure to click the link below at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and feel free to share your own in the comments. Uh, join us next time and we'll be talking about small plates. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe Share, Recipe Share. Share a little recipe